Uh, so my name is Shannon Cohen. I'm a product manager at Pivotal, um, responsible for routing and load balancing in Cloud Foundry. I'm joined today by uh, Aaron Hurley, who's our lead engineer on the routing team. And we're going to share with you some of the work that we've been doing over the last year, integrating uh, Istio and Envoy with Cloud Foundry, uh, what we're currently working on, and uh, where we see it progressing. So uh, I'm going to start with a, a couple of basics about the problems that Istio solves. And then uh, we'll get into um, the uh, nitty gritty of integrations and uh, specific features that we're uh, rolling out in Cloud Foundry. So the, 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 uh, the domain space of uh, problems that Istio attempts to address is quite broad, but uh, it is scoped to uh, how microservices uh, are consumed by clients, uh, how microservices interact with one another and consume their dependencies. So this diagram shows uh, some of the concerns in that domain space. You've got services of disparate, uh, written in disparate frameworks. Uh, they, you have to manage multiple versions of them. You have to manage uh, how they're consumed by clients and how they cl consume external dependencies. And the challenge with this is that uh, there's many things which uh, developers of each of those microservices have to be concerned with. And it's the same common problems that every developer needs to be concerned with. Things like uh, load balancing and rate limiting and retries and timeouts. Um, very standard communication patterns. Uh, operators are also concerned with uh, security concerns like is uh, data in flight encrypted? Um, how are requests uh, authenticated and authorized? Um, how do I manage security policy across a large portfolio of these applications? And how do I um, have visibility into the traffic patterns and uh, whether the uh, security policies being enforced are the appropriate ones? So a common way that these concerns are being addressed today is that uh, each application developer is less to solve them themselves. And all application developers solve them uh, over and over and over, and across large portfolios of applications, they're not always solved the same way. It's difficult to have visibility into uh, whether these are uh, s uh, solved in a consistent way. Here the colored boxes represent uh, either custom code or libraries that application developers are leveraging to solve these problems. As I mentioned, uh, a problem with this pattern is consistency. Uh, a lot of uh, folks who are leveraging Cloud Foundry uh, are doing so to enable uh, large um, teams of developers, develop many, many developers and many applications. And so managing that, uh, that consistency, or lack thereof, uh, of uh, how these problems are solved uh, is a challenge. Uh, it's very hard to have uh, visibility into, uh, for example, uh, across all of these applications, have they updated their dependencies to address a CVE that's been rolled out? Uh, it's also a burden on application developers to uh, repeat these solutions over and over when they could be focused on uh, value-added business logic. An alternative approach is to use an out-of-process proxy or sidecar uh, and a centralized configuration plane or control plane to manage them all. Uh, Istio and Envoy are examples of uh, what we call a service mesh, or a service mesh describes this pattern of sidecars and control planes. And a service mesh helps address uh, some of the concerns that, uh, or, or troubles with the, uh, the custom code pattern in that it provides uh, uh, the operators with a, uh, a way of keeping all of those uh, solutions up to date. If the platform operator is responsible for uh, updating the sidecars, then the app developers are focused on their business logic code. It's a polyglot solution because the, uh, the, the uh, uh, proxies responsible for these patterns are uh, out of process. It can be um, uh, agnostic of the, uh, the framework that the applications are written in. Policies can be applied at scale because uh, you have centralized management of all the sidecars and the policies that the sidecars are enforcing. 
application developers don't have to be responsible for uh, as much uh, security because uh, a security admin can be confident that when applying a security policy across a service mesh, that it's enforced at all points. And the user experience for applying these policies is consistent for all personas involved, whether it's your security admins or your platform operators or the application developers. So as I mentioned, STO is a service mesh, and uh, we like STO because um, it has a very vibrant uh, open source community. It is platform exhaust, uh, agnostic, um, like uh, the success we've seen with the Kubernetes project. Uh, Istio is uh, gaining wide adoption. Um, there's uh, uh, consistent uh, maintenance and uh, innovation happening from Google, IBM, Lyft, and uh, more recently Pivotal. Envoy's already been proven in production. Uh, there's an emphasis in Istio on extensibility and pluggability, and it addresses uh, some of our, uh, uh, the, the concerns that I mentioned around traffic management, security, and observability. It's another view at, uh, of the relationship between Istio and uh, the data plane. The, the three data planes that we're concerned with are ingress, uh, represented here by the red arrows, um, service to service, represented by green, otherwise known as east-west, and egress. Istio has uh, three primary components. Pilots responsible for applying configuration across the sidecars. Mixers responsible for receiving telemetry and making uh, additional uh, policy checks in a, in a pluggable way. So you can have multiple um, mixer backends which are providing additional uh, policy engines. And Citadel which is responsible for distributing TLS certificates. Uh, when you look at uh, the, uh, d the data flow diagrams here, um, there's a, a, a number of components uh, involved, and this is uh, the nature of, um, of requests being made uh, across ma uh, through many intermediating components. But when you think about how to manage uh, traffic management and security policies in a service mesh, the view becomes much more simple because uh, you're only, controlling, you're only having to, to control the sidecars. So it's like having a, a remote agent in uh, every application with which you can use to, as a security admin or um, platform operator, enforce global policies or enable application developers to uh, apply their own policies within those guardrails. One reason why we chose uh, Istio to uh, integrate in Cloud Foundry was so that we could deliver, speaking selfishly from the Cloud Foundry routing team, uh, deliver on use cases that we've heard from Cloud Foundry operators time and time and again more quickly. We're one team. We have, uh, our, our team size has grown from four to eight and fluctuates. And uh, being able to leverage this large community uh, of folks who are innovating on uh, the same use cases that we've heard from um, is a big advantage. And so we've, in the last year, uh, as we'll describe, uh, have integrated uh, or begun integration of Istio with Cloud Foundry and participated in that community. Aaron will talk about some of the contributions we've made. So a bit about what uh, we've done already and where we're going. Uh, as some of you may be aware, Cloud Foundry already uh, has installed an Envoy proxy in every container, but that proxy is currently statically configured and fulfilling one uh, small purpose. It's actually a very valuable one. Uh, it is terminating TLS from the Go routers for ingress traffic, and also through uh, identity in the certificates, guaranteeing uh, against any misrouting due to a stale uh, routing, uh, routing table in the Go routers that may occur during a uh, failure in the control plane. Uh, of course, we'd like to uh, eventually have that, uh, uh, those sidecars be dynamically configured, and I'll get to that in a moment. What the team is currently working on is uh, a uh, analogous and eventual replacement for Go routers and TCP routers, leveraging a ingress perimeter envoy 
that is dynamically configured by Istio Pilot. And uh, in order to accomplish that, we've had to do some fundamental integrations between Cloud Foundry and Pilot. Aaron will talk about some technical details, but the gist of it is that uh, we've needed to sync the idea of routes and, and applications and, uh, and the IPs and ports for application instances from Cloud Foundry to Istio so that the, uh, the perimeter or ingress envoys have knowledge uh, or this route mapping between uh, a URL and backend uh, IPs and ports as they change as the container orchestrator uh, moves containers around. So we've done that uh, and we've done those fundamental integrations and uh, in addition, we've targeted some uh, initial new capability that we can bring to Cloud Foundry based on Istio and Envoy and the one that we've chosen based on feedback from um, many users has been support for traffic splitting. This will enable an application developer uh, interested in rolling out a new version of their application to control some percentage of traffic sent to a new version. Uh, in a demo you'll see later that we uh, can show how, for example, an app developer can send 10% to version two and then turn that knob, increase the percentages and shift traffic over time and finally cut over. So we've done that integration. We'll show you a demo of that later uh, for that feature. And uh, we're currently working on scaling this integration. Uh, Istio itself uh, has uh, been tested at uh, Kubernetes scale. Uh, this is um, not yet Cloud Foundry scale to give you approximate comparisons. A Kubernetes cluster has been tested uh, at about approximately 10,000 10, containers. A Cloud Foundry cluster supports 250,000 containers. So uh, there's a, a significant difference in, in scale for a single cluster there. Uh, we have tested that uh, our integration supports uh, 10,000, but in the interest of, uh, as we've done historically, uh, getting production uh, mileage on Cloud Foundry uh, innovations, uh, we target a scale of a production environment which we have access to. Pivotal manages uh, something called Pivotal Web Services. Uh, that production environment serves production customers and operates currently at about 20,000 routes and 20,000 apps. So that's our current scale target. Uh, so we're iteratively working towards that target. We've already accomplished an integration of 10,000 uh, and that's what we're currently working on. Uh, just recently, the, the CF container networking team has begun uh, the initial work to uh, uh, eventually enable east-west traffic, uh, egress traffic from a container to transit the sidecar and dynamically configuring that sidecar for the purpose of eventually offering uh, features like client-side load balancing and control of retries and timeouts and, and all of that. But there's some fundamental work that needs to be done first. Uh, packet capture of egress, uh, sending that through uh, to uh, Envoy VIPs uh, and eventually the, uh, the dynamic configuration of those envoys. So uh, once we have these uh, fundamental integrations in place, uh, we're excited to, to, uh, to roll out um, to Cloud Foundry users the, the uh, capabilities that Istio offers. Um, one of the uh, top asks we hear from users is support for mutual authentication or MTLS between services so that encryption uh, everywhere in the service mesh, uh, sorry, data is encrypted everywhere in the service mesh. Um, this will enable us also to offer um, token validation for authentication and authorization, support for rate limiting, support for new protocols like HTTP2. Uh, we hope that uh, Envoy will uh, soon support UDP, uh, which will, uh, I think, cover many, many use cases. Retries, timeouts, redirects and rewrites, and uh, a great deal of flexibility in route matching. Folks have asked for regular expressions instead of just prefixes that uh, Cloud Foundry supports already. We see uh, the, the Istio-based service that we're developing uh, as not just being responsible for ingress, but also service to service and egress, as I mentioned. 
And we're also participating in conversations with the Istio community on how uh, Istio can facilitate uh, application of these traffic management and security policies, not just within a Cloud Foundry cluster, but between Cloud Foundry clusters, between Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes. Uh, the Istio community uh, does have uh, currently uh, recommended patterns for a single Istio governing multiple clusters, but not yet for how uh, these policies can be managed across clusters which are uh, in uh, across geographic regions or across cloud providers. And those, uh, those discussions currently are in a conceptual uh, phase. But uh, uh, recently a couple of proposals came out last week that were a good read. And uh, if you're a member of or considering joining uh, the SEO dev mailing list, I recommend reviewing those proposals and participating in that conversation. Uh, a point about uh, rollout plan. Um, the, the new Istio-based uh, routing control plane uh, is being rolled out in parallel. There is no, absolutely no uh, deprecation timeline or sunset timeline for the existing uh, Go routers and TCP routers. We know many folks uh, are uh, getting great outcomes of those uh, production-grade services. Uh, the uh, Envoy and Istio control plane is brought up, being, being brought up in parallel, and uh, we recommend that uh, for app developers and operators who want to leverage the new capabilities that they would do so by using a different DNS name. Eventually, once we reach parity, we would uh, identify a deprecation timeline for the Go routers and TCP routers, and we're very much looking forward to having a, a single proxy that supports those use cases. Uh, we mean to uh, do the work necessary to support that scale. Okay, here's a quick diagram of that parallel control plane, a data plane. All right, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Aaron. Thank you. All right, thanks, Shannon. Um, so Shannon touched on a lot of the product value that we're getting out of our new routing subsystem. I'm going to talk about some of the implementation details, um, engineering benefits, and then as well as our experience with the ICO community so far. I'm going to try to get through this quickly. So as you can see in the bottom left-hand corner here, we have an Envoy, which is configured in the gateway mode, so the, the edge of the cloud, the ingress uh, traffic, will go through this Envoy. And this Envoy receives its configuration uh, from Pilot um, through the Envoy v2 XDS API. So this is a bidirectional gRPC stream. Pilot itself receives uh, the, its config information from Copilot, which is a component that uh, the routing team has, has created. And you can see here that Copilot is really responsible for talking to uh, Cloud Controller and Diego, and it takes the actual LRP information and maps that to the routes so that we can provide um, all of the Cloud Foundry route information into Istio config so that Pilot can read it. Uh, you can see that the solid lines are event-based uh, transmissions. These are like CRUD actions, um, whereas the uh, dotted lines are the bulk synchronous uh, actions. And so these happen every 30 or si 60 seconds or so. And this guarantees that if we do happen to miss any um, one-time uh, event-based transmissions, that we'll still have an eventually consistent model, uh, which has served us well so far. So some of the engineering benefits of the new routing subsystem is that it's a simplified routing tier within Cloud Foundry. So instead of having Go Router and TCP Router and routing API and that, we now only have Envoy and then um, Pilot and Copilot. Um, so it's just we've converged on, on one control plane and one router, uh, and we expect it to be able to handle everything. Um, another added benefit is the resiliency of each of these components. So both Envoy and Pilot have some uh, built-in uh, resiliency, uh, resiliency as to a, like a network partition if it loses uh, contact to, um, like if Envoy uses, loses contact to Pilot, there's some built-in resiliency as to how long it should keep its routes in place. Um, and these are all configurable so we can tweak as needed. Um, another benefit to really the entire Cloud Foundry system is the fact that we're able to clean up the container orchestration layer 
Um, and we can do this because currently Diego uh, has some route emitters that are co-located on each of the cells, and these are responsible for emitting the route registration messages. Um, as I sh showed in the previous slide, we're now polling BBS, which holds all of the actual uh, state of the world. So that uh, piece of the a Diego cell reaching back out to NATS will no longer be necessary, and it just cleans up the abstraction across the board. Um, this provides some of the initial groundwork towards a service mesh to gain all the capabilities that Shannon mentioned. And maybe most excitingly is uh, the fact that we hope to better enable all the other teams um, for future integration and ex extensions of Istio and uh, a, a way to uh, get other teams to accelerate on delivering some of their features. Uh, as Shannon mentioned, our, our current focus is scaling um, a target of 20,000 apps and routes. Um, we've been tackling this in an incremental process, basically scaling till it breaks, finding what breaks, fix it, and repeat. Um, it's been a pretty fun track of work so far. Uh, some of the early things were obvious uh, inefficiencies in our code, but then we also found some inefficiencies in Pilot itself and contributed some, some bug fixes to get scaling up um, in, in Pilot itself. So we, we've learned that um, through our uh, CI and the tests that we run, uh, that we are able to identify some of these scaling issues um, more transparently than even the, the community might, uh, as uh, they don't quite have it built into their CI yet. They do run them daily, but um, we, we find you know, a red box in CI a uh, much easier thing to notice. And then currently we're around 11,000, so we're on our way. So uh, as Shannon mentioned, we've been working um, with Istio for about a year or so now, and we've learned a number of things. Uh, Probably the, the biggest thing is that it's a fast moving project. Uh, Istio just released its 1.0 release a few months ago, so you can imagine up until then there are things constantly changing and staying on top of those uh, changes ha has been tricky. Um, we learned that uh, lots of context additionally is needed to understand um, not just the code base but also uh, you know, the, the intentions of, of the entire platform itself. Uh, so what we learned was Rather than our standard pair rotation uh, strategy that we take, um, we actually dedicated one pair of our team to work solely on Istio community-focused work. And this was able to get us uh, the more like day-to-day -day knowledge of how this community works um, and build up some relationships and some goodwill with the, the community so that we were able to further our understanding of Istio. And one way that we saw an opportunity to do this was the fact that Istio is largely built with Kubernetes in mind, and this is largely reflected in the code. So since Istio is intended to be platform agnostic, uh, we saw this as an opportunity to provide some pull requests to uh, generalize a lot of the code. Um, some of the other things we learned was the way communication in the community works is, is slightly differently. and. What we have found best is this, just to be as open and transparent um, early. So creating a GitHub issue, gathering comments, um, using that as an audit trail, and then providing proposals for comments uh, ha has worked best for us. And then last thing to mention here is we do have a few uh, like blessed Istio members on the routing team now. And so this comes with some uh, further capabilities uh, within the project itself, but also gives Cloud Foundry a bit more representation into the community. Uh, so one big piece of work that we worked on is the mesh config API and protocol. Um, so this was really a decomposition of Pilot, so an incremental refactor. And the goals of this was to make it easier to test Pilot um, it resulted in a bit more modular and more well-defined boundaries of the code itself. Uh, we were able to rip out some of the more platform-specific code as uh, we follow a general API and protocol now. Um, this is a well-defined and accepted API so that uh, all, all folks that want to provide a server know what they need to provide and um, can expect you know, the same like responses. And then lastly, as a result of the MCP work, uh, it's also easier to extend for future tools. Um, instead of having logic live inside of Pilot, these are now moved out to the MCP server. And so the server uh, just has to communicate all of its config over the APIs. 
And so it looks something like this. So previously up top, you can see that there's uh, a client for Kubernetes and a client for Copilot. These both reached out to different servers and they had different APIs. Uh, after the MCA and, and MCP work is all completed, it will look something more similar to the bottom, where there's a generic MCP client and then some other servers that follow the MCP API. Uh, for example, Copilot for Cloud Foundry or Galley for Kubernetes. And now I'll do a quick demo of our weighted routing functionality so far, and this is going to follow a canary rollout of uh, doing a standard V1 to V2 and switching traffic from uh, zero to 10% to 50, then 100. Uh, so first, I'm just kind of showing that there's two apps. They're very simple, app v1 and app v2, and they're uh, currently only app v1 is mapped to a host app.istio. And here on the bottom is just a little curl loop, so I'm curling 20 times, and the currently highlighting v1, so you can see that 100% of the traffic is being sent to v1. Um, what I just did here was I added a weight of nine to the existing route mapping, and maybe something I should uh, pause this for a real second, real quick second, is that right now this, this current demo is uh, weight-based, uh, integer weight-based, and so it will essentially take, um, you know, the weight you assign this route mapping along with the, a sum of all the others, and that's how it will determine the percentages. We actually plan to move to a percentage-based uh, routing once we uh, get some time with the, the CAPI team to work on the V3 routes object. So what's in this demo may slightly differ from what we have in the future. But so I did a preemptive increase of the existing route mapping from one to nine. It still receives 100%. But this will make sense once I map v2 to the same route. So it gets the default mapping of one. And then so we would expect that the uh, v2 uh, instance would get 10% of the traffic. So right here, I'm just quickly taking a look at the route mappings object. Even, even recorded demos have some unnecessary steps. Um, but this is all just to show that uh, the, the route mapping itself uh, by default will have this property. And there it is. So now when we do this same curl, uh, you can see that there are some V2s that are starting to pop up. So this example shows that two out of the 20, so that's 10%. Um, so that worked out as we had hoped. Now I'm just going to update the original V1 mapping and move that back down to one. So now each instance has a, a weight of one, meaning we should get 50% uh, of the traffic split between both of them. And it takes a little bit of time to propagate, but you can see that it start kicking in halfway through. And then so kind of the last step from here is, you know, as you're monitoring your app and 50% of the traffic going to V2, everything seems great, let's just finish the cutover and unmap the original um, mapping to the V1 instance. And then from here, do one last validation, make sure traffic's going where we expect it to go. And we can see that it's all, all now going to V2. All right. Um, so here's a list of resources that we've res referenced in the talk. Um, the slides are uploaded, so feel free to take a look. And we want to hear from you. Uh, what, I just showed you one UX example, and you know, using API endpoints is not the best, but we're, we're curious to hear what are your thoughts as to what, what the provided UX should be. Should it be something similar to CF? or would you prefer to actually use some of the Istio native configs? Um, additionally, what, what sort of problems could Istio address for you, or are there things that you're looking for? We would love to hear your uh, ideas there. And then lastly, we have a routing and networking office hours today at 3.50. There's also an Istio birds of a feather session at 
And you can always reach us in the routing or Istio channel in Cloud Foundry Slack. And that is everything.